want him? I like him. The Quicker Picker Upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker and is two times more absorbent so you can use less. Bounty, the Quicker Picker Upper. I was suddenly moved. I still cry when I think about it, but then I cry at Animal Planet. <laughs> Lin-Manuel Miranda led a moving tribute to Stephen Sondheim on the Red Steps in Times Square. Broadway came together to sing Sunday from Sondheim's Sunday in the Park with George, the musical icon passed away Friday. He was 91. Now, tomorrow on ET, we'll be celebrating the musical return of West Side Story at their big premiere. And before we go, don't forget Kenny G's album, New Standards, is out Friday. Check it out. And listen, there's only one way to end the show. We have to end it like happening now. Better to be safe than sorry, experts say. Get fully vaccinated and that booster until we know more about Omicron. That story coming up. Our chilly mornings will be coming to an end, at least for the time being. Also, some rain chances later this week. A lot to talk about. I'll see you in a bit. And a San Antonio family gets a little bit larger just in time for the holidays. It's all part of National Adoption Awareness Month. We're going to introduce you to a San Antonio couple that adopted two teenage boys. Next, the News at 5 starts right now. First at five, it's called Omicron. It is the latest variant mutation of COVID-19. The World Health Organization now considering this variant known to be very high risk globally. Its discovery last week in South Africa comes as no surprise to the Texas Biomedical Research Institute, which has been studying how COVID-19 mutates. Jesse DeGoriato talks with Texas Biomed about the role it may play yet again. This variant is a cause for concern, not a cause for panic. Those we spoke to at this pop-up vaccination clinic seem to echo what President Biden had to say about the Omicron variant. We've been through a lot so far, and I think that we're going to get through this next round as well. Every so often, we're not done with this pandemic yet, so uh, I'm definitely looking forward to finding more out about it. Until more is known about Omicron, experts say the safest bet is to get fully vaccinated and get Get that booster. So vaccination is really the way to go, even with Omicron. Being that Dr. Larry Schlesinger says the unvaccinated remain at highest risk. Although too early to say for sure, he says the immune response from the vaccines are broad enough. It's almost certain that this vaccine will still be at least partially effective against Omicron. Once it receives the Omicron variant itself for testing, the animal models used in developing the COVID-19 vaccines will be essential, he says, as well as the technology and expertise at Texas Biomed. We're going to continue to do our discovery-based science to learn more about this virus and how it causes disease where we're constantly looking at these variants in terms of um, better therapies or next generation vaccines. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. Three people recovering after a crash on the far west side last night. According to SAPD, an officer's cruiser hit just before 11 p.m. near Highway 151 and West Military Drive. Investigators say a driver of a sedan ran a red light, struck the officer's vehicle, that driver was seriously hurt. A passenger also injured. They were taken to the hospital. The officer taken as well as a precaution. At last check, he was okay. An already active fire took a turn for the worse this morning on the city's west side when the flames hit some nearby power lines. San Antonio firefighters responding to the fire at an abandoned house on Calabra Road around 7 this morning. They say the flames were so close to some of the power lines that they started sparking. That issue made it more difficult for the fire to be put out. It was preventing us from working in an entire corner of the building and accessing one side. The sparks took about an hour to fade out on their own. Luckily, no one hurt here. Investigators are trying to figure out how the fire started. No power lines involved, but another fire last night happening at the Texas Tires on Fredericksburg Road near Vance Jackson. Fire crews called out to the tire shop just before midnight. They say that fire damaged a fence, an outside wall, along with the edge of the roof of the building. The business closed at the time. Firefighters did not find anyone inside. Authorities are saying the fire is suspicious. An investigation is ongoing at this hour. 
Big chill in the air earlier this morning. Take a look at our low temperatures right around sunrise today. We made it down to 32 in Kerrville and Fredericksburg, 39 for the low earlier this morning in Uvalde, and officially in San Antonio, 40 degrees for the morning low temperature. That's six degrees below average, but then by the afternoon we topped out right at 70. You look at the temperatures out there right now, and for the most part, right around 70, 69 Floresville, 72 Eagle Pass, West Kerrville, 72, even Seguin at 70. You get the idea. Very fall-like outside this evening and temperatures are going to cool off quickly again. You'll want long sleeves or even a jacket, possibly both by 10 o'clock will be in the mid 50s. Calm wind, fairly clear sky cooling off quickly. Another chilly night, then some changes to detail in a bit. Ursula. Thank you so much. The trial of Jelaine Maxwell, the accused accomplice to Jeffrey Epstein beginning today. Maxwell facing six counts for her alleged involvement in a sex trafficking operation of underaged girls. She's accused of recruiting and grooming minors to engage in criminal sexual activity between 1994 and 1997. The 59-year-old who denies the allegations faces up to 70 years in prison if she's convicted. Epstein, her longtime friend, arrested for his crimes back in 2019. He was later found dead in his jail cell. His death ruled a homicide. Maxwell's trial expected to last six weeks. Now I'm Stefania Jimenez. You know, we're also covering another trial for you tonight at six o'clock. It's really a heartbreaking story. Two children speaking in court as their father gets sentenced for killing their mother. Our Jaffney Gray is going to give us the latest in the Brian Ramos sentencing. Plus, this is an institution in San Antonio, but it's getting shut down. So what's happening with a local student newspaper? So our intent would be to continue to provide um, information from a student perspective at San Antonio College in January 2022 and into the future. Lots of questions, and we're going to talk about the future of the Ranger coming up at 6 o'clock. And now we're going to send it back to you, Stephen Ursula. Thank you, Stephanie. Add Christmas trees to the items that can be dangerous if not secured properly on your vehicles. Samuel King joining us now with more on that. Samuel, we see him on the road all the time. Are there ways, though, to protect your vehicle and others? Yeah, Stephen Ursula, it's very important because unsecured loads caused more than 1,300 crashes in Texas last year, with one death and several injuries reported. So AAA Texas is reminding people about the importance of making sure those loads in this time of year, Christmas trees, are properly secured. Reminders include making sure they're covered in netting or tied down and use vehicles like SUVs or pickups to transport. If that tree comes off the vehicle, uh, it could uh, fall onto another vehicle, it could fall onto a pedestrian, and so it could injure other people and, and it could cause serious injuries or even death. And those recommendations apply to other large items such as ladders and furniture. And we'll have more on that coming up at six. Taking a look at traffic uh, this evening, this is some slow traffic there of Loop 410 at uh, Ingram Road I have a crash at Evers so you can see uh, sort of the backup uh, this is causing here in that area heading eastbound on 410 half an hour between 151 and I-10 this evening. Also vehicle fire in 281 northbound near Loop 410 so watch out for that this evening. Ursula, Steve. Thank you, Sam. Now we go to some consumer news. It is Cyber Monday. You've gotten a lot of emails already, right? Yeah. All across the globe, people are looking to score a deal online. Yeah, this year's supply chain problems hitting shoppers and businesses alike. And as ABC's Rena Roy explains, today President Biden addressing his administration's plan to tackle those issues. From toys to electronics and home goods, the deals are all over. Americans expected to spend between 10.2 and $11.3 billion on this Cyber Monday. The notable discounts that we've been seeing within the online data are toys. Right now, they're at about a 20% discount, and computers oftentimes as low as a 13% discount. But this year, supply chain problems are affecting both shoppers and businesses. President Biden meeting with CEOs of various companies Monday addressing those ongoing issues. I want to hear your ideas on how the federal government can continue partnering with you all to keep shelf stock so American consumers can get what they need. And we've seen some progress in that effort with a number of containers sitting on docks 
for more than eight days, down by over 40 percent this month. Officials at the port of Long Beach, one of the nation's largest ports, says things are already improving. Well, we're going to have a better, better holiday season than we did last year. We've seen very good progress and reaction from the international carriers to address this very concerning issue here at the nation's largest port complex. In light of those issues, many retailers opting for an earlier, gradual, and digital set of holiday discounts. We're seeing that sales have increased compared to even last year and the year before. And I think that's because people are anticipating the supply chain issues. And so they're buying earlier. Retailers are giving deals earlier. For the first time, online spending on Black Friday and Thanksgiving did not exceed the previous year's levels. Some analysts say it may be due to those earlier discounts and supply chain concerns. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. New at five TV antennas. They've come a long way since the days of rabbit ears covered in tin foil. Remember those? With more and more people dropping cable to cut expenses, antennas are popular. But which should you buy? 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz has information that can help. Chris Patterson cut the cord years ago. He uses an antenna to watch Sunday sports and local news. His favorite perk? There's no monthly fees and you don't have to have any sort of contract with a cable company or any other company. Consumer Reports tested indoor antennas of different shapes and sizes in both the city and the suburbs. In our tests, most models were able to receive dozens of free over-the-air channels. One that worked well is the WineGuard Flat Wave Amped. It's super thin for mounting on a wall or window. Their tests also found little correlation between price and performance. This budget model from Naxa has the classic rabbit ears and loop design, but also has modern features. No matter which antenna you choose, several factors impact the number of channels you get. Where you place your antenna can be really important. We suggest placing it as high as you can and preferably close to a window. Where you live and buildings and trees can also impact reception. You may need to try several models to find what works for you, so shop where you can easily return or exchange. You should also rescan every month or so because you might pick up new stations you couldn't get before. As for Chris, besides saving money, he found his antenna came in handy. A couple years ago when there was a major storm and the cable went out in town for a couple days, if you had an antenna, you could still watch TV. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. In order to serve all of South Texas, the blood bank requires a seven day supply to keep up with demand. And right now they only have about two and a half days worth of blood. They need donations. It's why this morning the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center held a blood drive in Birdie. And there's another opportunity for you tomorrow. Aside from saving a life, here's another reason why you may want to donate. When you come out here and donate, you'll get a free ticket to their Old West Christmas Light Festival, which is amazing, by the way, beautiful lit up at night. And not only that, you'll get a free two topping pizza. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center says seven days is the goal to have in supply, but having more supply this time of year is always helpful considering they typically deal with more car accidents and trauma victims around now. Tomorrow's blood drive is at Enchanted Springs Ranch in Bernie from 10 a.m. till 3 in the afternoon. You can find more information at KSAT.com. Tis the season of giving. November is Adoption Awareness Month. And while it's coming to an end, the need for adoptions is year round. Up next, we're going to introduce you to two young men who found their forever home when they weren't sure what was in store for them. The loving couple they now call family next. November is Adoption Awareness Month, and boy, is there a need to be more aware. There are more than 1,200 children in Bear County and the 27 surrounding counties waiting for their forever home. At least, and the least adopted group is, of course, teenagers. Tonight, our David Sears introduces us to a family willing to open their doors and their hearts for a second time to two teenagers. The brothers now have a loving home to share before they head out on their own. 
It looks and sounds like just three guys hanging out in the kitchen and talking. It is. It is also one of the newest formed families in San Antonio. But I'm gonna have a turn. Xander is an 18-year-old senior, and Levi is a 14-year-old freshman. They're brothers, and as of August 20th, they are the proud adopted sons of Jason Edwards and his wife Krista. I'm going to formally grant the adoption. When the judge said it, it's just like finally there it is. There it is. So that was just kind of like more of a satisfying. I had already went through all the emotions that I was going to be adopted before. And it's just like nothing but joy. As soon as she was like, you guys are a family now, and then we closed the Zoom meeting, I was like, yes. One reason they feel so much joy, relief, that they found a home. Since Xander and Levi are teenagers, the chances of being adopted are significantly lower than younger kids. It just felt like we were the rejects. You're too old to be wanted now. So yeah, I was just, you know, looking for what can I do when I age up? What, what am I going to go into? Jason and Crystal had already adopted two teenagers several years ago. One now in college, the other working. Doing it again wasn't exactly in their plans, but they didn't hesitate when they were called to foster again in January of 2020. Didn't have any clue anything about them. Didn't know what they looked like. Didn't know anything. Just that they needed a home. It's just like, this is my life now, and I, I can't imagine it any other way, and I wouldn't want it any other way. It's just been great. It's just good when you have something so great that you can forget all the bad. Not only are these two learning to adapt to adoption at home, but they're also adapting at school. They're making some pretty good grades in AP and dual credit classes. David Sears, KSAT 12 News. I love that story. There are a lot of kids out there that need forever homes. Yes. All right, 67 degrees out there. You know what else this time of year is? Christmas tree time. More than just Christmas yeah. tree time. Trying to, it's a season of giving. Yes, it is. Trying to give more thermometers for ah, those Christmas trees. Well, I was gonna say admiring the tree behind and, Yes, and I did decorate it with some of the options this year. We've got the typical Texas cutout. We've got the Alamo cutout and the boot cut out all up for grabs. And so I will be announcing the first winner right at the end of the seven day forecast of our uh, big annual thermometer ornament giveaway extravaganza two per day. Every weekday I'm here all the way through Christmas and we'll get to the winner in a second how you can enter the drawing. Another chilly night tonight. The humidity it's back soon and you'll notice it later this week and not much for rain chances, but a few little opportunities here and there. So let's get right to it. 68 degrees feels like fall out there. Some nice high clouds off in the distance. They're coming in off the Pacific and even streaming over Mexico toward us and we'll have those this evening should make for a decent sunset. Dew point of 43 still dry air in place and that's going to mean we're going to cool off very efficiently this evening and tonight. So another chilly start to the day tomorrow. I mean, we had some locations right at freezing earlier today and I do think we'll be closer to 40 degrees tomorrow morning. Let's talk about it right now. Across the state, we have several 70s out there. Abilene 77, Amarillo 73. Beautiful Alpine, though, at 67. And here in San Antonio, we're at 68. In the hill country, some upper 60s. Not a big temperature variation out there. Here's what we're expecting tomorrow morning. 43 Hondo and Uvalde, 43 in Canyon Lake. At New Braunfels, about 43 degrees. I'd say low to mid 40s to start the day tomorrow. 41 Bernie, 44 Von Army in downtown San Antonio. Our morning temperatures, they jump back up again. It's that typical up and down yo-yo effect that we see this time of year. So by Wednesday morning, we're in the 50s, even Thursday. But by Friday and Saturday, with some stickiness in the air, morning temperatures back in the lower 60s at that point. So those are some noticeable changes that'll be on the way. Our one last real chilly morning, and then we'll see those mornings get a little bit warmer and muggier. It's one reason why the mornings will be more warmer. So dew points right now in the low to mid 40s. It's pleasant outside. Feels like fall, but notice this gradual rise in our dew points. And by Thursday, we're back in the muggy category with those dew points at and even above 60 degrees. So that southeasterly wind will gradually be boosting our humidity levels again throughout this week. It just like temperatures, the humidity has that roller coaster ride as well. A little bit of cloud cover coming in off the off the Pacific and streaming overhead from Mexico. That's being thrown our way by this upper level disturbance over the Baja Peninsula. This is a tricky upper disturbance, as they often are when they're cut off from the main flow. A little temperamental, let's put it that way. But it should throw a little bit of energy our way later this week to give us 
a slight chance of a few thunderstorms by about Thursday, Friday time frame. So let's break it down for you tomorrow. Another sunny day, but once the sun sets tomorrow, get ready for fog. 40s in the morning, low to mid 40s, 73 by the afternoon for the high temperature. We're looking at highs in the 70s all week and into next week, even closer to 80 degrees this upcoming weekend. There's 20% chance for a few isolated thunderstorms Friday, Saturday and Sunday. As we learn more about that upper level low pressure system, we'll keep you updated on those rain chances and fine tune them. Alrighty, Lisa Delgado, the first winner of a homemade thermometer ornament this holiday and Christmas season. You can go to ksat.com slash thermometer to enter the drawing. And that's Elisa Delgado. I'll be sending an email to in a moment. First, but not the last. Oh no, two a day, yeah. He's just a little bit excited. He's a little bit excited. All right, I'm <laughs> hoping the Spurs can maybe start something yeah. called a win streak. Yes. It's been a while. Greg's a little excited about that too. Yeah. Let's head over to the AT&T Center where the Spurs are taking on the Wizards tonight. It would be their first win streak of the season if they're able to do that after they went against Boston, now taking on the Wizards. But the Wizards are a lot better than they used to be. When we come back, a live preview from the AT&T Center and the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys out for their next game coming up. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to live to the AT&T Center, where tonight the Spurs put an end to their four-game Thanksgiving holiday homestand when they play host to the Washington Wizards. That's after they snapped out of their six-game losing streak by beating Boston on Friday night, even though they blew a double-digit lead and had to come from behind to win. Thanks to DeJounte Murray's 29 points to help spark a 15-0 run in the fourth quarter to pull out a 96-88 win. Now they face the Wizards, who are coming off a 120-114 victory over the Mavericks in Dallas on Saturday, that now puts them in third in the Eastern Conference. How does Drew Drew Eubanks adjust his lifestyle with COVID still a problem for a number of teams, including the Spurs. I mainly stay at home. I don't go out too often. Um, go to the stores here and there, trying to wait till every, everything dies down a little bit to go shopping and stuff. Uh, just got my booster the other day, so just try to stay up to date on what, what you should do and what the new developments are. All right, here's a matchup tonight. We'll have the highlights for tonight on the Night Beat. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. And we were just talking about teams having problems with COVID, and now head coach Mike McCarthy is out for the Dallas Cowboys Thursday night game against New Orleans after he tested positive today. McCarthy now joins the assistant coaches Joe Philbin, Jeff Blasco, Scott Tolzian, and strength and conditioning coach Harold Nash is out for the Saints game with the only player out so far as offensive tackle Terrence Steele out of Steele High School. Before his positive test was known, McCarthy made an appearance on a Dallas radio station today where he admitted he has moved into a hotel during the latest COVID outbreak. You know, I think our, our players are actually have done an extra job, excellent job going to, you know, taking the extra step. I mean, personally, I've, I've moved in a hotel the last couple of days. So we're, I mean, our, our climate here is, you know, we're, we're doing the, the things necessary uh, to give us the best chance each and every week. And, and I'm confident, I have strong belief as long as we continue to do that, that uh, we'll get to where we want to go. All right, Bob Stoops has come out of retirement to serve as the interim head coach at Oklahoma after his replacement, Lincoln Riley, decided to jump ship and become the new head coach of USC right before OU and Texas were set to jump to the SEC. Stoops will try and stop commits from leaving OU after quarterback Spencer Rattler entered the NCAA transfer portal today. Live from the AT&T Center, Greg Simmons, KSAT 12 Sports. All right, thank you, Greg. Now we have a little correction. Earlier on the News at 5, I misspoke. Jeffrey Epstein's death in jail was ruled a suicide, not a homicide. Apologies for making that error. We'll be right back. Another cool start to the day tomorrow. Low to mid 40s for most of us in the morning. By the afternoon, sunny in 70s. Actually highs in the 70s for the rest of the week and into the weekend. Just slight rain chances by Friday through Sunday. Thank you, Adam. And thank you for watching the News at 5. World News up next. We'll see you back here at 6.